come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> hey there, listeners. We thank Readers. you for listening. Welcome, friends. <laughs> and welcome back. Yeah. Some of you, and welcome for the first time, others of Most you. Most of you. Uh... No. Well, if this is your first time, we should probably say what we do here. We watch movies every Saturday, and then we talk about it and we record it so you can listen to it and uh, be edified, right? You're going to learn something tonight, we hope, about a movie. You're going to learn today. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to learn you something. Uh, What's you, from? You're going to learn today. That's uh, from some culture. I don't know. <laughs> it's been memes. Yeah, so. it's, it's, right. it's been it's a meme thing. I don't know. <laughs> Uh yeah, so you can uh, find us. I feel us like Kevin on, uh, Hart might have said it. I don't, sorry, continue. I feel like Will Smith would have said it. I, I, I don't know. know. I was thinking of Friday. I thought it was from the movie Friday. Uh, well, shit. Maybe we one covered of our you. black people bases. <laughs> right. There you go. I'll cover <laughs> all black things I know. I'm out. If somebody knows, you can get a hold of us on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can get a hold of us on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show, where you can write in, and we appreciate it when you do. Let us know what the answer to this week's trivia question is. <laughs> Who's said you gonna learn today <laughs> you gonna learn today <laughs> before it was a meme yeah oh, like a meme Kevin generate Hart. From. i don't know we Tell really us. fucked up this intro <laughs> <Tell us. laughs> well who are these people who are talking at you right now uh holly sean michaela and i'm colin do we say what we are we make up the saturday night oh, free show <laughs> Uh, so we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the freak show the internet radio superstars that you're listening to and this week's movie was chosen by michaela Michaela, what did we watch? Tonight? We watched 2002's Dog Soldiers. Directed by Neil Marshall. Who we know from. Uh, now you know him as a TV director. He has, Mostly, yeah. Yeah, he has directed two of the most important episodes of Game of Thrones Battle of the Blackwater and The Watchers on the Wall, which yeah. are huge, amazing action yes. set pieces. He's also directed episode three of Westworld The Stray, which mm-hmm. had some cool action in it as well. Um, of Hannibal and Hannibal. Constantine. Yep. And, yep. Anything, ma- Black Sales, anything major on premium cable or good TV. Those He's are directed good shows episode, to be yeah. a part of. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, that's, was he yeah. wanted, uh, it was nominated for an Emmy for. He's nominated for two Emmys for. Game of Thrones, one for Blackwater. For Blackwater. One for, yep. I was going to say, and he had to have been nominated for that. One for Blackwater and one for Watchers yeah. on the Wall. Did not awesome. win, unfortunately. But. And uh, he's yeah. currently attached to... The new Hellboy film. That's Interesting. right. Oh, mm-hmm. is he? Interesting. Yeah. He also directed one of the better recent modern horror movies uh, that I've seen in a while, I would say. The Descent. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yes. That was his follow-up to this movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. 2005. Jesus. Mm-hmm. God, I'm getting fucking old. In this movie, and, Dog oh. Soldiers was his first film. So, First full length film. This was the first Yep. Mm-hmm. Damn. It was like a student film or something. The killer leap before this. Movie. Yeah. I think that he had was like shorts. Released. Yeah, but he never yeah. did a feature. And length. after the descent, there was the big budget uh, movie Doomsday. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And that was followed by a movie that unfortunately nobody saw, which was pretty decent, uh, called Centurion with Michael Fassbender. Oh uh, yeah, Michael yeah, Fassbender. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't there another Neil Marshall? Is there? Isn't he a producer? I couldn't so tell you. Neil Marshall. Is that true? I don't know. Uh, don't know. I'm going to look it up. I only know this one. I'm going to look it up. All right. Well, while Sean's looking that up. So, Michaela, why don't you tell us what dog soldiers is all about? Are they dogs? Are they dogs? Soldiers? Are they soldiers? Are they, are they are both? Are they half soldiers, half dogs? Are they, are they soldiers fighting dogs? Are they dogs fighting soldiers? What kind of war is this? I you think know? this would have been a cool movie, right? If it, well, not saying that. <laughs> Frank, but they, Frank Marshall, I'm thinking. Frank, well, yeah, the famous <laughs> Frank Marshall. <laughs> I thought his name was Neil. I'm like, isn't there another Neil? Of Kennedy I thought, Marshall I, yeah, Productions. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah. Spielberg producing. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't you're that like, guy? You're like, no, oh, it's Penny. Penny it's Marshall. Penny Marshall. <laughs> Penny Marshall. <laughs> Gary that's Marshall. Gary Marshall. Marshall. Yeah, oh. now, I was thinking of Frank Marshall. <laughs> All the Marshalls are the same to you, aren't they, Sean? Same. You just whatever. can't tell them apart. Yeah, I know. You get Marshall blindness. I'm pretty sure they're not related. So Neil's a British director, yes. Yes. right? Mm-hmm. This is a movie about a bunch of dogs that are trained to be soldiers in the Scottish Highlands. I wish. That would be amazing. But, um, <laughs> is there an opening to make this movie? Dog soldiers. I mean, I know, like... If this I, time, they're really dogs. If I have one complaint about dogs? this movie, the title is inaccurate. But <laughs> I, this movie is about... Uh, we got we have like a small like army squadron of soldiers in the Scottish Highlands that are doing a training exercise. Um, so very similar to Predator in that like the setup, yeah. and they're yes. they're just 
we have blanks. We don't have real weapons. None of them are really taking it seriously. They'd rather be watching a football game. Shit footy. Goes, yeah. yeah. Footy. I mean, uh, it's Watch not a footy. game, Michaela. It's a match. It's a match. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it's a match. We're talking about soccer for okay. you people that don't understand. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just uh, England won, by the way. Mm. Five to one Spoiler. over Germany. Spoiler. Well, and you know what's interesting, too, is that the dates in which this movie is set actually line up with an actual English mm-hmm. England versus Germany soccer match that happened on those exact dates and the score was the same. That's how Makes like sense. deep cut the details I of this say, movie are. Yeah. That was clearly intentional. Mm-hmm. Big football fans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they go up in the Scottish Highlands to do their training exercise. Shit goes south real fast when they realize that, you know, they've been kind of set up by the special ops. When a cow yeah. drops on their campfire. I think it's Fli- a yak. Flies through the y- air. Like it's, yeah. it's those Highland <laughs> cows that have a long Yeah, hair. the flying yeah. Highland cows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah you know, those uh, flying, yeah, 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 yeah. flying yeah. Highland cows. Yeah, yeah. That's, hey, that's you've got a different Nessie soccer up there, team there, possible. actually. Yeah, the yeah, Highland true. flying cows. Yeah. Hey, you've got Loch Ness up there. you got Nessie. Mm-hmm. Why are flying cows not a possibility? Yeah. Maybe that's why they weren't very jaded. They're like yeah. Nessie. They're like Nessie flying cows. Well, whatever. You know, like we've got one bum fuck nowhere. Who cares? Scotland, you know? man. Come on. Yeah, because it lands on their campfire in the middle of the night, and their uh, immediate reaction is like, "Well, okay, we're gonna get some sleep." Yeah. yeah. No question. I'd Just, be like, "No, okay. thank you." I go investigate this in the morning. The guy's like, they- "Those aren't entry wounds." Those are teeth marks, bite marks, or whatever. Well, if mean. anything, they make fun of the guy that tries to shoot it with blanks. Yeah, that's yeah. the part that they like. Question. If anything, was it, it? Didn't wasn't he the only one that reacted the way you appropriately? Yes. Yeah, and they made fun of him for it. Like, yeah. You know, it's just a training exercise, and he's the only one taking it seriously. And they're like, "Fuck you for taking your job seriously, yeah, man." Yeah, somebody threw a cow at me. I, I would, I would react. I'd be flustered. Yeah, yeah. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're fighting werewolves. In the Scottish Highlands. That's right. It's a full bore howling werewolf movie. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's right. You thought you were getting dogs, but it's actually dog men, wolf men. Yeah. Well, the rest of the movie focuses around the Kevin McKidd character. Mm-hmm. Kevin mm-hmm. McKidd, you may know from such films as Train Spotting. Where do you know him from, Sean? Uh, he's from Grey's Anatomy. There you go. <laughs> there it is. He made the jump into mainstream American uh, Hollywood work. Good for him. Mm-hmm. And he plays a soldier named. Cooper. Cooper. Named after somebody? Don't think Night so. Not, not to my knowledge. Agent Dale? No, okay. Uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> Something, right? It's in the zeitgeist. Uh, so Cooper's, a, so he's a, he's a regular, like a private, right? And mm-hmm. he's applying to try and be a special forces operative that's uh, with a team that's led by uh, Davos Seaworth. Yep, Liam Cunningham, <laughs> Sir Davos the Onion Knight from Game a of Thrones. A young Davos right. Seaworth. Yeah. Yeah. No beard. Weird with weird. no beard. Yeah. Because this is... He has a cleft chin. He does. ...15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Poor Sean. Sean's left in the dark <laughs> Just come over to the Game of Thrones I was side, gonna. Sean. Somebody Come over to the Game of Thrones side. Remind me. Okay. <laughs> I've got him. Will I ever get them you back? Did. That's the question. I've been doing good lately. You have been. Yeah. Folks, I have yeah. a reputation. <laughs> I'm trying very hard to beat it back. Yeah. Knowing is half the battle. Uh, I know. I'm but, not in denial anymore. Okay, so there's a, a moment here that I'm trying to figure out if it was cribbed from another movie. If it was, I don't recall. But uh, the the success fail of this, because apparently uh, Cooper is an ace, uh, you know, operations man. He survives for two hours and 45 minutes out in the woods without being detected. And so the final test is that, uh, um, what's the character's name? Ryan? Yep. The Liam yeah. Davos. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep. His character gives him a gun and says, shoot this dog. And uh, Cooper has a problem with this. And it's like, you won't even shoot the dog. You got to be able to do whatever needs to be done, Colin. Right. In order to join spec ops. Yeah. And since he doesn't, he fails and he's booted back to his regular squad. When he says, I, he says, it's not that I can't do it. It's that I won't shoot that dog without a good reason is yeah. his thing. And he's like, we don't want people with a conscience on our squad, which like that scene. Shot for shot was all in Kingsman. Oh, was yeah. It King- oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ripped it shoot the right dog, off. Eggsy. Shoot the dog. Yeah. yeah, and then he doesn't do it. Mm. So mm-hmm. it feels like it was something in something before this, but I can't recall. So this is it, setting it might up. just it be a was. Right. It some might just version be a of another. Yeah. I know. I feel like I've seen that before. Yeah. 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 I mean, but besides Kingsman, but yeah. The scene is obviously setting up some great confrontation, which is going to resolve itself in the third act of this movie, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. Cooper is going to have a moral decision 
And he's going to have to shoot the dog in order to survive, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Quote, unquote, the dog. Yes. It, yeah. Depends on how you define the dog. Yes. Because yeah. yeah. there is another dog in this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a little dogs. border collie yeah. named Sam. That he's a good boy. Movie. Yeah. He's the good, the good, he is the goodest boy in this he movie. He is the goodest boy. <laughs> well, I'm like, I mean, well, we'll have to, when we get to the ending of the movie, I'm not entirely sure it delivered on that promise or, you know, the setup there, that scene, like, like. I think does that it dramatically pay off at the end. I think it does because I think in I think the payoff version of that is not a literal dog. I think it's it's um well, right. Ryan. I mean, it's okay. Ryan's character is what it is because like he should have been able to just shoot him once he found out he was screwing them all over, but he didn't. Hmm. Mm. But does I think that, that's where the payoff is. But that's that kind of negates the shooting the dog for no reason to survive, you know, whatever. Because right, yeah, I don't know. But that's the thing; he has such a conscience, he couldn't even shoot a guy that sh deserved it. Mm. That's the payoff. What happens to Ryan? He turns into a werewolf. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, remember the sword? He's in the, ba the and, basement, their cellar, and then he gets yeah. he gets stabbed with the letter opener and then shot in the head. That's right. The check out the very letter. last world. Yeah. Check out yeah. letter the opener last pays Ryan. off at yeah. the end of the movie. Yeah. It's not Ryan. That's yeah, Ryan. That's yeah. I thought that was yeah. the guy. No, I thought it was no. the guy who ran into the branch. No, no, no. that that guy, that guy's that's gone. Bruce. He, he gone. He died. Why did he have the thing in him? Because the sword. That's the claim war that Spoon put through him. Did, yeah. Or no? What were you doing during this did movie? Did <laughs> put the, the sword through the werewolf yeah. Ryan at the end of the movie? Was it a sword? It looked like the a it branch. Was a sword. Of some Remember, sort. it no, went it through a... the guy's mouth. Yeah, his teeth he's got the teeth. On the it didn't look like a sword then. It oh, looked Jesus. like a sharpened like thing. Do you think yeah. a branch made that it's... noise on his mouth? His teeth were what scraping. Else did what else This is a Scottish house. They have claymores. Just like every house is issued. Their family, no. A two-handed great, like it's a big sword. Yeah, it's, it's a, a two-handed great yes. sword. Like, how come we don't sword? have those? Yeah, and, we just, mean, like well, current, like we all us have personally. Guns, that's or, what it is, right? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is America. You can huh? have it if you want. Right. Yeah. It's not going to help you any. <laughs> but but in Scotland, you're issued like a claymore. Right. And, and if we, you're born yeah. with a sword in your family. Yeah, you have a tartan and a sword. We just have, yeah, yeah. We get that awesome gearing up montage. <laughs> yeah, we get the awesome gearing up montage at the, like two thirds through the movie where they're going through the house trying to find weapons and they find like an electric knife, like an axe, and an axe yeah. pots and pans, and then this guy opens a chest like it's a fucking video game and boom, mm. two handed greatsword <laughs> inside the chest. <laughs> Oh yeah! I thought when he pulled out the electric knife thing, we we're gonna have a, a idle hands moment there. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just like, yeah. why, why is this happening? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, Ooh, we're gonna have to saw something up. Yeah. This is weird. Well, they end up, uh, so since uh, Cooper's busted back to his squad, they end up, you know, uh, on this training exercise where they're supposed to be fighting special forces. Surprise! It's Ryan's crew that they're actually out there mm -hmm. uh, being, you know, well, as the, their antagonist, right? Yeah. But something happens to Ryan's crew. They're all dead. What happened to them? They're all dead. They're attacked uh, by uh, night vision goggles. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> 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 All right, werewolf POV. Yes. We do get some werewolf POV, and it's in black and white. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, dogs can't see color. Exactly. Right, right, right. So, yeah, the werewolves take down Ryan's crew. Mm -hmm. He's all flummoxed about this because there was only supposed, There's supposed to be, to be one. one. Mm -hmm. And he just kept saying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There it's can only, only be, be one. one. <laughs> yep. So, this puts the rest of the. And then the crew itself is attacked by, or the squad itself is attacked by the werewolves. Mm -hmm. What are these werewolves like in this movie? They are like cool. nine feet tall. Yeah. They're super tall, really long limbs, and like their fingers have to be like ten Large inches long. Large hands too. and yeah. yeah, very. Um, big but, hands. but a very wolf-like head. It's not like a wolf man. It's a werewolf. Like I don't know. To me, like real nerd stuff here. There's a difference between a werewolf and a wolf man yes. in my mind. Like mm -hmm. wolf man is very Lon Chaney, just like hair on a humanoid face. No, this seems like an actual yeah. wolf, a giant, it's, it's a, wolf, a, wolf, head. a giant yeah. wolf head, a giant wolf head on yeah. top of a very just long person. Yeah, yeah. really, it's Which, just really long features. It is. I like this design. This is mm -hmm. my it's favorite werewolf cool. design, like ever yeah. on screen. Oh, ever. love it. Yeah, I like it too. Oh, I because like the, the head is a straight up wolf. And everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Do they fare that well in that? Well, okay. So the the director chooses to shoot a lot of the at least initially keeps the werewolves werewolves off screen. Mm -hmm. And then when he does show them, he shows quick them cuts. in little bursts. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you see something run past. The action's very frenetic. 
you know, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of cutting and the camera is moving all over the place. It's a, mostly a handheld movie mm-hmm. shot in like 16 millimeter. Also, yeah, it's, yeah. Like it's very grainy. Very I grainy. think when the yeah. movie started, Holly was like, what year was this? Movie? Yeah. 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 It was like 1972. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. 2002. Yeah. yeah. 15 years old. Yeah. But uh, the werewolf bodies are basically, I think. I mean, so they've got, you know, the actors or whatever, the design is mm-hmm. that they have, you know, furry hands or they don't have furry hands. They just have the big claws. I think it's just they're the big just, claws. There's a little, like, little there's, tufts of hair. Yeah. They're like those naked but, cats. Yes. Yeah. They, basically. Yeah. But, their heads like, are furry. but the head is furry. With like the, miscellaneous little strands. Yeah. yeah. But like the hair, body's yeah. mostly just like hairy skin. skin. Yeah. yeah. They, they're kind of like <laughs> pumpkin head. Kind of, yeah. Oh, the, the, the yeah, it the feels a little pumpkin, pumpkin head ish. Not the what you're saying, the, like the animatronic, mo- the movie. Yeah, Sculpt? like with the big hands and everything. Yeah. kind of the way he walks around. It feels yeah. a little bit like that. I get that. Not yeah. as big as I think pumpkin head gets, but yeah. uh, I kind of, kind of like that. It's, it's just like tall, slender mm-hmm. uh, performers wearing these gigantic animatronic wolf heads yeah. and mm-hmm. finger extensions, and I don't know if they did anything with their feet because we never really get to you see. Never see. Yeah, feet. if they have the bent back ankles or yeah. no. I feel like from their the nerd stuff again. I feel like from their posture, it kind you kind of get mm-hmm. the sense that they do because they're very hunchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially when they run, they're really like hunchy too. But like, yeah. yeah, we never see their feet, so we don't have that pumpkin head problem of seeing someone wear sneakers in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, because they're always standing. There's always something covering their feet. Mm-hmm. Even like when they're inside the house, I'm thinking like there's a bed or there's like yeah. a dresser mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. So you're thinking of that scene where yeah. you're behind the standing up. I was like the bed. That's like that our best seen. shot of the werewolf. That's yeah. my favorite yeah. movie, right? shot in the whole movie. Yeah. I yeah. love that scene. Um, well, Plus, okay. we never get more than like five seconds looking at him like dead on. Mm-hmm. So really? how, what, what's the impression that that left you guys with? Because Holly and Sean, this is their first time seeing this yeah. movie tonight. Mm-hmm. Like how did that, I mean, did it... Because I guess when I watch it now, it's like, it's you know, from a filmmaking perspective, I see that he's trying to camouflage the suit. If you can't look at it long enough, mm-hmm. then you're just getting an impression and it's hiding whatever, you know, zippers or whatever mm-hmm. sure. might be included in the in the the, the makeup. Right. right? Mm-hmm. But how does it play? You know, if you're if you just watch, were you satisfied with the amount of werewolf that you got in this movie? I was actually, because normally I'm very much like, show me the monster. Like I, I want to see it, but this gave me enough that I wasn't disappointed for the, sh- the quick shots. I think it worked. I really think it worked. Yeah. I liked it a lot too. Um, I, he may be, I don't know if he's, if he's trying to hide. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they are. Cause you can't mm-hmm. usually with most, most practical werewolf design, um, Unless you get to like nowadays, they they try and hide it a little bit. But I think you know, um, I liked uh, the quick shots. I mean, it leaves more to the imagination mm-hmm. as to what the full thing is. When, like I said, we never get a full shot of these things, but just the way they're designed with the angles and everything, it's almost like um, it doesn't feel to me like he's purposely trying to hide something. It just feels right. like they're yeah. too huge to ever be like fully seen mm. in any area that they it are. Didn't I seem think like, they worked it nicely. It didn't seem like a cheap strategy. No. At all. Mm-hmm. It's it worked. It it flowed. Yeah, I, I think they they found a way f- to work with it. Um, where it I, works in their favor. I like too that a lot of times, especially early on in the movie when you're first seeing them, it's a lot of silhouette. And like mm-hmm. the silhouette on these like yeah. creature design is fucking creepy as shit. Yeah, it's it's great, really yeah. good. Like mm-hmm. it's, I don't know, like if he is trying to cover up, you know, not show the seams of this, yeah, it doesn't come through on screen no. that, that mm-hmm. way. It comes through as a more artful execution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, because he also employs the tactic of whenever there's a werewolf uh, attack eminent or whatever, the you know, because the a- the action ramps up, you know, there's rapid editing. So I don't think yes. like any shot of a werewolf lasts more than like what a, ha- a second and a half. It's so yeah. quick, but that's matched, I think, by like all the different camera angles that he's employing. You know, mm-hmm. at the same time. So like when something's happening, it's like yeah. sh- sh- cut, 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 cut. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it works, and it, it it I think it works like kinetically. He's matching everything very well as far as like mm-hmm. what action he shows the werewolf doing versus what he cuts to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what yeah. ends up happening? I think it, it, the it all connects through those shots and his editing. Like said, um, he did flows. very good at the editing yeah. of this movie. Like it all flows. It doesn't feel disjointed mm-hmm. when he's trying to do that. Yeah. It works well for him. I was actually more annoyed earlier in the movie when they're all sitting sitting around in the woods and they're like jumping from character to character as they're talking. Mm-hmm. And they're, that, all just, they're just bullshitting. Rapid. Yeah, they're yeah, just bullshitting. Like, yeah. To, it's like a line of dialogue, next person, and a line of dialogue, next person. And it jumps 
it goes on for a long time. Yeah. That annoyed the shit out of me. It does. It's, yeah. But that's another technique where he's trying to, you know, I mean, because basically, I mean, it feels like a lot of this movie could play out as a, as a play, right? Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. for a movie that you. One set. Yeah. Like which one we haven't location. Even to, you know, <laughs> yet. But yeah, I mean, the, the idea that, the, you know, there's a lot of dialogue driven, um, you know, conversations. And so in order to keep that alive, I think he's doing all this rapid cutting, Mm -hmm. even in the dialogue scenes where instead of just like, you know, putting the camera down, slowly tracking around the campfire as they're talking, it's like, it keeps you more interesting. And for if since we haven't gotten into werewolves yet, like it keeps you it keeps you with them. You can't you know, um, you're trying to keep up, I think, with what's going on with their dialogue. Otherwise, like you said, it would just be, you know. You said it would went on forever. Imagine Dang. all that going on and it just being slow shots staying on these people. I think it makes it, it maybe a little much, it, but it I think it makes much. it more interesting than just kind of sitting on them and listening to mm-hmm. them talk. Yeah. And maybe he saw that in the scene he had. He was like, ah, we need to do a little something to this. And Like I see what he was doing, but I feel like it could have been more condensed, not so choppy. Like maybe have a couple people in a frame and then switch. And then another's like just not a cut per character. Short, yeah. Shorter. Yeah. Like it was just a bit. Well, it's funny because he doesn't direct like that now. I mean, no, it, it, it feels like that's Definitely. the work of, you know, like an early, you know, like an experience. A, yeah. But he's and he doesn't trust. OK, this is the way that I'm taking it. That he doesn't trust his dialogue to be interesting by itself. Right. You know, like, uh, you know, that you can just sit and do a master or, you know, the two shot, you know, mm-hmm. he's figuring, well, we got to make this kin- visually kinetically interesting. So we're going to keep cutting around, you mm-hmm. know. So, I mean, to good or bad effect. I mean, that's what's I think maybe going on. Mm. It gives the movie a mm-hmm. style, yeah. I suppose, you know. I think my favorite example of the editing you were talking about, Sean, is like um, it's probably like two thirds into the movie when they're at the farmhouse and they decide they're going to like go get her car and start it and leave. And the two guys go outside and one lights a flare and has a gun. You can see like the the like werewolves are right on the tree line. You can see their silhouette and like the camera does this like slow pan and you see like the the hood of the truck come into frame and it's all shredded and the engine's completely gone. Oh, yeah. But like you as the audience see it before the characters see it because it's just this slow thing and like that to me was a really, th- that was a nice example of show don't tell, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Kind of filmmaking that I thought was really nice. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned a farmhouse because mm-hmm. this movie becomes a siege movie. It starts mm-hmm. off as like yeah. a war Indeed. movie in mm-hmm. the woods and about whatever, half hour in, 20 minutes in, they find uh, refuge in a farmhouse. They're led there by a woman who I can't remember her character name. Megan. 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 Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Holly. That's what you're here for. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> she claims Good to night. be like a conservationist or something who was recruited by the army to like study these werewolves mm-hmm. and is now helping out the trapped, you know, soldiers after yeah. they they come under attack. And she picks them up like on like a country road when they're running away from these werewolves. We get an awesome scene of like two of these guys have like their guts ripped out getting in the car. Oh, yeah, and we, then we need to get back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. yeah let's back up a little bit. Yeah, let's back uh, up a wonderful, little bit. <laughs> wonderful things, wonderful things that are happening this before in this gory, movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, Real Go quick. ahead with what you were saying, but oh, we're coming back yeah. to that. Right. So they, they get in the car, and then we have this awesome scene of, like, a werewolf on top of the car shoving its hand through the roof and just, like, clawing at everyone inside, and they're hacking at his wrist. Like, every awesome kind of, like, horror, like, trope that you've seen before, yeah. like, the monster in the back seat, the monster on top of the car, the monster coming in the house, all those happen in this movie. Like, every but single one in a one wonderful way. Yeah. It's yeah. all done expertly. Definitely. But before that... <laughs> yeah. We get some awesome gore happening right off the bat when Bruce, the character Bruce Campbell, there's a character named Bruce Campbell. Yes, when they're movie. running around yeah. a Christmas tree farm, it feels it's like. It's what it looks yeah. like, right? And that's, that's what it feels like we're doing in this scene. <laughs> yeah. This guy, feels like Lethal Weapon yeah. a little bit. But yeah. he somehow impales himself on a tree branch. like <laughs> Worst soldier Jeez. ever. Worst. Just terrible. He's running away from the werewolf and like, <laughs> but somehow with enough force to Ugh. drive him like, I don't know, like two feet into the yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, he's That's really some impaled. Force. Yeah. That's some like force. you would think that would just like bruise a couple ribs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's pointy enough and you're running full speed, I could see it happen. I think yeah. he'd have to. I don't know. Do. I could see it happen. It could, it could, it could happen. For for the gore factor, I <laughs> yeah. think. Yeah. It's is, cool. It's cool. 
Ow. And then uh, I was worried I'm going to do something stupid like that. <laughs> stupid things like this are like, God damn it, I'm going to die because I'm an idiot. Because they it's don't, too they real don't sh- for you, Sean, yeah, isn't it? Uh, it's so great because they don't show it at first. He just turns a corner and he's just like, Hoo! and there's just blood coming out of his mouth and there's sound effects. Right. And you're like, what got him? And he's like, right, oh, it's shit, the I've best been way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, look, the, I've been impaled. The other major character in the film that we, so there's, you know, we mentioned uh, there's Cooper. There's, uh, you know, it's the good soldier. Yeah. Uh, Ryan is the spec ops guy who's right. injured, and they find he's the only survivor of the special ops group. They have to take him with. And then there's uh, Megan, who mm-hmm. rescues them. Right. And there's uh, uh, Sergeant. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sergeant. Uh, all right. Who's Sergeant. Name? Can't remember. Sergeant. He's played by Sean Pertwee, who uh, I know because. That person, Harry Wells? Was it Harry Sir, Wells? Yeah. yeah, Sergeant, Sergeant Wells. Wells. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There we okay. go. Sergeant Wells, who's like the fatherly mentor or whatever. Not maybe not fatherly, but he's on good terms with uh, with Cooper, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, the best mates. Yeah, this is played by the son of a Doctor Who, John Pertwee. Yep. That's mm-hmm. uh, Sean oh, Pertwee, his kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you know BBC only has like a fam- yeah. a, a, right. a family of like twenty actors that they right. choose everything it's from. True. Yeah. Once your family's under contract, it's <laughs> yeah. just that's it. It's it's like you will forever work for BBC. Yeah, not a bad gig. If you're no, a I, British yeah. actor, I would right? take it in a heartbeat. Yeah, but he gets uh, you know taloned. Is that the right word? Oh, slashed. It happens so quick. Yeah. Like the werewolf, like grabs at the soft part of your stomach, like predators do. Yeah, and he, mm. like like he says later on in the movie, sausage links everywhere. I think. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like sausage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, his <laughs> intestines just pop right out of his stomach. I don't and think just I chill even, in there. I don't think I even saw it happen. No, that's no. the thing. Did but that's you, the that's like the you, kinetic. That's it. Almost feels like yeah. an old school. Like we can't show it, so we got to figure out just how to do it in the editing. So yeah. it's yeah. that you see the swipe. And then you see the aftermath, and you never mm. see the contact. Mm. Yeah. yeah, which I mean, they and they pull it off. It's effective in this. It's like, think. was that a werewolf? Oh, his guts are falling out. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh! yeah it's great. <laughs> and he's like holding them in his hands up against his body. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. holding his own intestines like to his. Like, no, just put, push him back in. <laughs> yeah, just, really I know. Cool That's about it. It. That was the best part. Is his buddy comes along. He's like, oh, don't be a hypocrite, and is actually shoving his guts back in his just body. <laughs> Now, you Amazing. wonder how you can pull this off in a serious movie, folks, but we have neglected to maybe give the impression that this is a comedy. It has comedic extent. moments. It has humor. It, it does. Okay, not a comedy. Yeah, but that's it's not dead a, alive. But that's comedy, not a comedic but, moment. Right. Like, that's not, there's Come nothing. Come on. Oh, that's a comedic moment. I don't yeah. know, dude. It, it he talks called. about it. He's like, they don't fit. Well, we could, they came out of there. We could push them back in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, it's yeah. it's yeah. labeled on com- one of these things. It's a comedy. Like, yeah. this comedy is mentioned on one of No, I mean, like, whole, the whole scene, like, it's not set up to be comedic, and then all of a sudden it's funny. Oh, I think that, it is. Yeah. No, I think he knew, really? uh, yeah, I think he knew exactly yeah, what he was doing yeah. with that. His, his guts are coming out, and he's uh-huh. trying to push him back in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's designed to be, but that's the kind of comedy that I yeah. did. But it's also <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's also like just very like quick comedy in the way these characters mm. are. I don't know how much I don't know how much is like in the script or versus how much he let his actors. Yeah, but so much of it, like Spoon being there, and well, there's a character with her Spoon. Or, you know, they they yeah. give all these like you know we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and it cuts to him going like. A what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, great. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. We need someone fast and someone loud. What? Everybody looks at him. <laughs> huh? What? Yeah. Oh, no, that wonderful. was it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We got to have somebody run out and do a diversion. Everybody turns and looks at him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was great. So good. It's very funny. Very a lot of comedic moments mm-hmm. in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, I wonder how much is in script and how much is is being with that group of guys and just letting them be like, huh? What? I don't know. But it they seems do, like they pull it off was there, very well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's got a light tone to. Well, that's not even true. It's, I think that's what I'm talking about. Like the tone is not light. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like that, I wouldn't it's call not it a com- like a horror. Right. I wouldn't it's, call it, it a horror funny, comedy. I wouldn't call it a horror tone. comedy either. No, no. it's no. It just has comedic moments here and there. But yeah, that's not the the theme or the are they yeah. jokes yeah. even? I suppose are the visual puns or little gags like that. I mean, there's some jokes. It seems it's more like just, just in the, comedy in the of the situation. Yeah, it's yeah. Ban- it is banter. It's banter. Because, yeah. I mean, if you're going to be in, like, I think most people in situations like this, if they're not utterly terrified, mm-hmm. they're 
commenting on, you know, they're just trying to make light. Things are going crazy and they're just saying what, you know, humans do. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it happens to be funny. And I think that's kind of where the comedy comes from in this movie. But I wonder if this is the reason why movies like Dog Soldiers get remembered, like, you know, years mm. on is because, you know, you remember having fun when you watched it. Yes. Like, if it didn't have a sense of humor and it yes. was trying to be, like, dark and terrifying. And just drill that into you. I don't think, right. Yeah. Because I've it's... seen those movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, they're called, like, wolves. Yeah. They're exhausted. Thing. Yeah, and you watch and them once be. and you're like, I'm good. Because yeah. all that gut stuff is just like, hey, it's the guts look so gross. Uh, in this movie. But it's in those gross, movies, it's yeah. like it's taken seriously and it just keeps coming at you mm-hmm. and just like mm-hmm. uh, it's, being it's, scary. It's, it's an assault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas this, you know, livens it up a little bit and mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. it, it breaks the tension in certain areas with the comedy. You're talking about like the just the visual. There's the dog when they get the uh, Sergeant Wells to the house. The dog takes a liking to his, uh, well, it looks like. <laughs> you can't tell, yeah. It looks like the dog is pulling his guts out, which oh, is a hilarious like, looking. Like, which yes. is, yes. Everybody reacted. When I first saw it, that's what I thought. I was, yeah, yeah. Like I was just like, ah! <laughs> no! And like the dog, this dog is like the sweetest dog ever. It's not yeah. like an intimidating, scary dog. It's no. not like the police dog we saw at the beginning of the no. movie. It is like, but it's just like, give me that. You're it's like, a toy. But that's also the like the funny thing thing that we think of because that isn't entirely impossible to show up in something like, you know, I don't know, in Shaun of the Dead or something like that, where a dog just runs up and starts pulling in a dude's guts and everything. Yeah. He just, yeah. like, he's unraveling his stomach bandage that's holding yeah. his guts yeah. in. Yeah, and because, yeah. right, and because of the because serious it's bloody, tone. you're like, yeah. what the... F-? Well, because of the serious tone we've taken thus far in the movie to have the dog do that, it becomes, it's funny, but it also becomes like, oh, no! Yeah. Don't do yeah. it! Yeah. <laughs> well, and, like, while that's happening, werewolves are, t- are like, literally at the front Attacking door. Yeah. the door, yeah. And the dog, and they're like, shut the dog up. Because like the dog is gonna like attra- obviously attract attention, right. you know. But also like if you're unfamiliar with this movie too, I'm sure you're like, well, shit, is the dog in it on this? Is the dog like a part of this werewolf right, situation? Like, well, like maybe there's you know? a, uh, some sort of connection <laughs> right. between these. Mm-hmm. I was worried about that dog the whole mo- the whole time. Yeah. So whole like, time. Is this dog gonna turn on somebody at mm-hmm. some point? Yeah. I just like that they have this big threat of werewolves and there's just like still the the bullshit of like the dog is tugging at my shit right now. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's what makes it funny. The and little was... stuff doesn't just because the big stuff is happening, the little minor stuff, it doesn't go away. Yeah. I, you know what the, you know what they should have added in just to add to those minor annoyances is like the dog just like dragging his ass on the carpet or something like that. <laughs> it's something that's like can you not right now? Like right. can you like we... <laughs> Yeah, in a big moment they're just like what the fuck is he doing? Like they're all sitting around the table having a serious conversation. You just see it in the back. <laughs> it just uh-huh. it's that Stuff kind like, of yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah see a, that would be good. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be wonderful. Well, they end up yeah. using super glue to stick the guts back in the guy. That's which one of the a, most famous things from this movie for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's like everyone's like, what's that movie where that guy glues his stomach oh, shut yeah. with super glue? Right. It's this but, movie. Have you guys never heard scene. of that? No, uh, that makes, but it only, yeah, it makes, I have, but it makes sense. That, that's where I figured he got it from. I'm like, that's an urban legend, right? That the super glue was invented for Vietnam to like glue. It's very yeah. real. I've people done it. back together. I mean, we've all You've glued. glued your guts back together. Yes. Good God. No, my, no, my dad hit his head and split his, his scalp open. And my and I had to hold it shut while my mom glued it because he refused well, to go to the I mean, doctor. Folks, it's in one in one way or another, like what are band aids? It's yeah. glue on it's, bandages. Yeah, yeah, liquid yeah, yeah, bandages. Yeah. Liquid yeah. bandages. It's, it's the glue. same thing. Well, that's it's what we've been thing. using glue to save ourselves <laughs> yeah, right. for years. Yeah. But in this case, like this guy like has a like a eight inch hole in his stomach at least, right? Like his whole stomach split open. Thing, he, yeah. No, he would like, need like gorilla glue. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like well, and they show like a little tiny squeeze bottle. It's like, no, man, you're going to need like a gallon of that stuff yeah. to seal him up. Like, yeah. There's a technique here too that I'm not entirely sure about because, uh, you know, I guess what I would do is fold the skin back, put the glue on, then put the skin back. They're like... The, the, just dumping it. Yeah, they got the bottle like a foot away from the guy and they're just yeah. doing the scissor here back and they're forth. They're hoping for the, like, just, yeah. Yeah, the big, like, get it all over. Smear it all over. Yeah. <laughs> but he reacts in a way that seems perfectly reasonable. A, he's kind of freaking out. This is like, well, I might die, so like, that's my best mate. And I, I love you. Yeah, he's just and getting he's shit faced. He's also the bleeding a lot. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's Knock me out. <laughs> and he's just getting shit faced. Yeah. yeah, it's great. <laughs> and they have to wrestle with him to get the to gun get the, and the booze yeah. away from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. I love that scene. Mm-hmm. It was hilarious. Yeah. Because yeah. you figure you would. Nobody's just going to sit there and let their guts get glued back in. Like, like, all right, go for yeah, it. They're going to be yeah, you know, cool, moving man. around and struggling and be like, no, I want more booze because it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Totally. And the comedy works from that. 
The comedy works from like I want to say unnatural. Uh, uh, it feels natural in a way that werewolves are attacking you, and it's natural. Because he's like talking to the girl. He's like, "No, let me tell you, he's my best mate. I love all my men. They can marry my sister if I had yeah. a sister. <laughs> right? But he's my best mate. It's, it's the shit you say when you're either drunk or dying. It's basically. great. Yes. I love it. Did you learn any new uh, English slang? Watching this film, honestly, I prefer to watch this movie with subtitles because I like have a hard time with it sometimes. Sometimes you, you do miss a thing or two. You gotta quick about it, it and yeah. it's just like, eh, what? I watch well, a lot of British TV, so I'm, I'm used yeah. to. It. <laughs> yeah, but there's uh, a lot of bone, bone, bone. yeah, bone. so much so that yeah, Megan bone. had to ask, "What does bone mean?" Like, yeah. It's like yeah. bad. <laughs> so it's like we're it's like we're boned, we're fucked. Well, yeah, 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 okay. So, right? yeah. It's bone. Bullets it's bone. Yeah. It's would be fucked. yeah, or whatever. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. Did we treat and twatter. You got it. Twatter. Well, yeah. twatter. Yeah, any yeah. version of twat comes yeah. along yeah, yeah. Yeah. that as well. Um, I liked just to go uh, sidebar to go back to the very beginning. I like the uh, the devil tattoo on the ass story. That that was a great. That's story. a great story. story. Like yeah. I love that. I scene. I love that scene. That's great. That was such a good scene. It's got so much. It's got such gravitas. The way he's telling it's just like oh shit. He knew it's like a with ghost a story that tattoo. comes out. Yeah. Of yeah. Is that just it's like the campfire ghost story? It's mm-hmm. great. Right. I love is that just to set like a tone with the movie or kill time? I mean, it's a good story. I mean, story. It does both, but it's it's good story. The thing is, this movie, like, and I, I've heard Neil Marshall like state this before, is that like the thing he doesn't like about horror movies is that how expendable the characters are and how like flat they are and how you mm. have no attachment; they're just fodder mm-hmm. for the killer. He mm-hmm. really wanted you to spend time with these characters so that you would care about them and be able to recognize mm-hmm. them from one another and yes. notice their personalities. All right, and so was, I got a question: and Then did it work? Do you know who Terry was? Do you know who Joe was? Do you know who uh, Witherspoon was? Could you tell them apart. I know. I know Spoony. Mm-hmm. I know who mm-hmm. Bruce was. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. because of the way he died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I I know who uh, the and Terry. Which one? He hot wired the car, didn't he? That yeah, was he Joe. Got, Joe wasn't it? Joe. Was Joe it? went to the, yeah with the car. Terry got pulled out the window and, like right after they got there. Yeah, uh, he, was, oh, the, that's he right. was the first one. I may not associate right. the names with them, but I I know like the characters and I what uh, happened to them. Yeah. If if I know more of their personalities mm-hmm. than I usually know, like how they act with the rest of their team and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's more the, apparent with these characters. The story that you're that he was telling the uh, I'm sorry, you no, no, go ahead, go ahead. The it was like the Indianapolis story from Jaws, right? That's what they were kind of going with. But the idea that the guy got a tattoo with the devil on it, and he hit a, a landmine, and the only part that wasn't singed afterwards is the so the uh, devil did save his skin, just not all. Yeah, he said his soul belonged to God, but the devil right. had his skin. The devil had to save his skin mm-hmm. when those black mm-hmm. eyes roll over away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you hear that terrible high pitch screaming. But I love that it. I love that it was also um, intentional for foreshadowing because he had the same death at the end. Mm-hmm. He. Yep. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. True that. Yeah. True that. Yeah. Yep. It's true. <laughs> true. <Yep. laughs> Yep. yep. Oh, yep. Did you guys- <laughs> I need a minute. Hold on. Oh, oh. True that. Yeah. True that, Colin. You're right. True that. True that, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, true that. True that. For show, mm-hmm. as they say. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Oh goodness. Did you uh, did you guys like when Spoon finally accepted that the werewolf was gonna kill him? He spat in his face and said, I hope I give you the shits. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's that's what I like. I okay. And then after Spoon is dead, they where's Spoon? There is no spoon. They find and his like, watch though. Yeah, but that was the Matrix sense. joke that they set up spent the entire movie setting up. Entire movie for that one payoff line. Yeah, I, yeah, that I didn't care for. What's the oh, You're not impressed. There is no you don't no. care. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, as far as the Matrix, I like the watch joke better than the Matrix joke. The fact he got his watch back. He got his watch back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that better than the the. I didn't get the Matrix thing because I've only the spoon thing. Yeah, yeah. It took I'm, too I'm much not to gonna lie. Back. I haven't seen the Matrix enough to to know that <laughs> that was a joke. I, yeah, I was the, not. It's well a little British. He's like, there is no spoon. Yeah. Yeah, this All is right. bending spoons <laughs> and yeah. the oracles. Yeah. It hasn't office. been that long since the Matrix. Yes, it has. It, it has. has. I saw. Oh, okay, has. I saw the Matrix once when it came out. Same. What? Same. What? I don't you don't watch it every year. What? On Matrix no. Day. No. I I should probably give it another go because I was what like twelve right, now, when it Colin came out. Colin is being while well, Colin is being facetious <laughs> in a, a Matrix yeah. Day. It is actually a good movie worth rewatching, yeah. unlike the sequels and what have you. But the first I one is just like. 
I mean, well, we, we all, all have, have it. We, we issued yeah, that's that movie. And that's I, what, yeah. yeah. When we I came out I, of our chambers and detached from the thing, <laughs> they gave us the Matrix. I think I inherited it from a breakup. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know. But I loved, um, we talk, we're talking about Spoon. I loved Spoon. <laughs> He just full on boxed the werewolf at the end. Oh yeah, he was just, like that was my he he stood the longest against a werewolf and he was just boxing him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was amazing. I like that at a certain point they're just like, well, I'm gonna probably fucking die, so I'm just gonna fucking like mm-hmm. go round awesome. for round with this werewolf. And yeah, I'm like you know, what are you gonna do? I love that because he was just like going fucking nuts on him. And it was hilarious. That mm-hmm. was great. Yeah. Sword on the teeth still makes me cringe. Mm. You know, uh, last week we were talking about uh, the guy, the the pudding spoon, and how like the sound of the spoon scraping on yeah. the guy's teeth was annoying. Just this a, is that like times ten. This is oh, uh, they they yeah. it's ah, so God. effective because they go from that just teeth. close yeah. and just ee- and it's, it's like, like ah! the sword is like vertical, so like the blade of the sword is going right between. Right, yeah, it's not flat. Oh, yeah, it's you just, not just flat. seeing the yeah. full like broad side of it scraping oh, against his blade. If so you were to uncannable. twist that blade, it would do weird things to your teeth and break them out. Oh, yeah. uh, yikes! Ugh. Yeah, there's all sorts of switchbacks and double crosses that happen. I mean, they get to the in the farmhouse, everybody gets to know each other, and mm-hmm. then there's several switchbacks, and we find out startling revelations about characters, namely <laughs> Megan. Megan. Well, we find out. Well, they find a picture of like the family that lives uh, supposedly lives in the farmhouse, right? Because um, we haven't seen them, but we hear they allegedly live in this farmhouse. There's five people in the in the picture. There's five werewolves outside. It's like, oh shit! Then we find out. Megan, we wouldn't know that you know. though that there are just five werewolves because first of all, like they're never these, seen all together. They're never yeah. seen all together, yeah. and also we don't. I'm I uh, uh, keeping track of like. There's like two werewolf suits, right? Basically, well, I mean, there, yeah. I think there's like three. It's like it's like aliens, where yeah, there's like three see, alien yeah, suits, yeah, yeah. and like that's it. We see three at once at most. Basically, yeah. I think so. But yeah. also because um, we don't know if they can really die. Like they get shot a lot in this movie, and she, and and she we, keeps saying you can't kill them. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, she does. It says it more later because they get shot a lot early on until we yeah. get into like exposition later on in the house. I'm just like, does, is anybody dying here? Mm-hmm. Does they get shot a lot. They lose limbs yeah. from mm-hmm. swords and whatnot. It's just like, are they dying? Maybe they're regrown and we, but don't they, even, they, we don't know. We, we know they have a healing capability, though. We yep. know that because we know. Right, yeah. Once, Over time, it's not like instant uh, wolver, uh, Wolverine. But how do we it's know pretty this? quick, though. It's quick. Yeah. It's like a it's day. Quick enough. <laughs> you know? It's quick enough on uh, newly scarred people turning into werewolves. Well, Who yeah. knows what it's like on actual werewolves Yeah, exactly, at this point. exactly. Could be much you know, quicker. Ryan, Ryan, when they find Ryan, he's like, you know, his chest is ripped open, yeah. he's bleeding, and then like, you know, by the time they, they get to the farmhouse, it's like, oh, he scars. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then poor Sergeant Wells, his guts was, were falling out. He has also starts uh, healing yeah. quickly. Mm-hmm. This is yeah, bad he's news. He's moving around an awful lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of an interesting thing. You've set that kind of time bomb. It's the zombie thing, right? Yeah. At some point, yeah. 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 you know they're going to turn. Yeah. 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 How did you guys feel about the transformation scene or lack thereof in this movie? I'm okay with it. Yeah. Because yeah. In, if there's a transformation scene in any werewolf movie, inevitably it's going to be compared to other transformation scenes as to whether it's going to be better or worse than that. So I'm glad mm-hmm. that the farthest we got was like fangs and eyes. Mm-hmm. And to me... Mm-hmm. Good enough. Mm-hmm. That's all we need. Yeah. I'm okay with fangs and eyes, and then whatever happens after that. Yeah, so I, I was like, perfectly okay with no transformation scene, quote unquote. I feel like he recognized the director recognized the capabilities they had. Yep, yeah. mm-hmm. and we're like, you know what? We don't need to. Tr- we don't need to try. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get there. No, we don't. Mm-hmm. And I, I totally respect that. Right, and you yeah. get it. You see yeah, you eyes and fangs, the, and like the, that's it. You know what's going to happen. You mm-hmm. still get. We don't the, need the, to see it. Yeah, you still get the impression, and it works. Right, mm-hmm. especially yeah. if you know you're just like, well, obviously I can't. I can't do this. Yeah. So I'm just going to, mm-hmm. like, this is enough. Like, yeah. he, I think he trusts in people watching this and are like, well, if I show you this, obviously you know what's well, going to happen. Well, they know werewolf movies. Yeah, it's so like, you know this exactly. at this point. Yeah. Like, this is like. So it's like, if we can't beat American Werewolf right. or The Howling or whatever, right. then we're just going right. to step right past it. Yeah, we'll we have a shorthand at this point. Yeah. You yeah. see this, you're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he uses that to his advantage, and it works mm-hmm. well. But there's also the double cross of Megan. Turns God out damn it, she's Megan. the sixth werewolf. She's the sixth werewolf. <laughs> she took, she the, took picture. the picture. That's why she's not in it. And that's why dun, she's dun, taking dun. the pictures throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Oh, shit. Foreshadow. Oh, shit. What? Shit, I didn't get till right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot that she was the one snapping all the pictures. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Makes blinding sense. them with the flash, you know. Uh, <laughs> ah, yeah. smart, smart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Why I, did she yeah. needed to be a werewolf? From a narrative standpoint, other than to have 
another character no. other than other than Ryan turn into a werewolf. She's the, the she's the bait. Like she like I took it as she's the like bait that gets them to the farmhouse. Yeah, for the rest of the werewolves because she was out just driving around and happened to run into them. Like that, I I took it as like spoilers if you haven't seen Get Out. Skip this right now. Oh shit! Get uh, out. Three, oh, shit. two, one. Skip ahead. Um, so you don't get out. You have the the girlfriend character that was the bait that brought right, them. Right. Yeah. To what? Death. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. Just, Sean. Just, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I took it. I took it. That was her role in this family was to bring the prey yeah. to the house. Mm, she she even it's kind possible, of possible because she does. She mention. alluded to that. She's she's like you know. I, she basically says I knew this was going to happen. I thought you might be my way out, but you're not. See, but that's so, well, yeah, yeah, but, but that's, that's where I'm conflicted by this right. interpretation. Because well, she said I didn't want to be a part of this fucked up family. Well, it she sounds like that, she's so. not naturally born into the family. It sounded like she came out to the woods to get to become one with nature yeah. and, and got what one. she was asking for by being bit right. by a werewolf. Even like maybe she's like went out to become one with nature and ran into like members of the family and everything. Yeah, and everything. Really bitter. Right, and ended up becoming part of this and you know because there was no one else around like mm-hmm. she became part of their group. Yeah. So then you know the, this she sees soldiers it's like they're going to be able to get me out of here. She's infected so maybe it is how Michaela you're seeing it. If she is a werewolf, even if she got out of the glen, what, you know, there's no what? salvation no, what? Yeah, for Yeah, there's this, no hope right? for her. Yeah. Why yeah. does it take so long for her to transform? That's a good question. We're all looking at Michaela now. <laughs> <As> <laughs> we we I, 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 did, I didn't mean to look directly at you. Uh, no. I was looking at all of you. because I, I, um, <laughs> I don't know, because that's the one thing they don't establish in this movie is, like, what is the moon cycle when they arrive, and what is it well, while they're there? They keep saying it's full moon. But yeah. how many... How many days of the fuck? How how what is the time span this movie takes place over? We two see days. at least two nights, right? Yeah, it's so, two nights. Okay, so it's two nights of a full full moon. Mm-hmm. Why why does she only turn on the last night? That's yeah, yeah the other like the other guys, yeah, in the morning. yeah, the other guys yeah. that get injured and turn turn yeah. before her. Exactly, yeah, you know, yeah, it's never established if it is the moon comes up and you turn into a werewolf because yeah. if that's the case, then they're turning into werewolves, you know, in like mid afternoon, right? Yeah, right, or at yeah. twilight. And then the fact that she can hold off for as long as she can, right. she, it's like, do you need to turn into a werewolf? And, mm-hmm. Oh, what's the what's going on here? What governs this magical thing? Yeah, that's really unclear. Rules, demerit. I really yeah. hated um, that dialogue right before she turned. It was very like. I'm the secret villain, like yeah. super stilted. Like you've seen this a million times. It, yeah. it was, uh, it, it was, was very out of the cursed. Fucking blue. Oh, it was very cursed. It was very cursed. Yeah. Yeah. and it tries to work point. work in like all the uh, the uh, wolf metaphors. She's the bitch. She's. I the hated legend. that. Yeah, hate that's that what I'm talking so about. I hated the the. Yeah. It wasn't clever. It, it wasn't. I hated. Fun. There was like I'm three the, other ones though, but I can't remember was, what they were. She was like, "It's useless being nice to girls," and I, I'll just. What did yeah. she, I remember she said. Oh, she says because it's the, the time of the month. The like, time, of the that month. time of the yeah. month. Yeah. 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 Was like, like, only uh, ginger snaps can say things like that. Right. It didn't fit with the rest I, of what came before. No. It was like eh. it was, the uh, whole scene didn't fit with. No, that. no, no. That's what I'm saying. It's her being a surprise, like right werewolf. That should have all been cutting room. That whole that whole scene just made me cringe. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And not only that, the actress does not deliver it well either. No. Like she, she sounds like I can't believe I have to say this right now. You know, that's how she. Yeah, she just like it's that thing with the you know, like I'm, you know, she was, you know, the, it's I'm, that time of the month thing. It's like it's the line could be good. I don't think it's good for this movie. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, uh, I'm okay with her being a werewolf and like the whole reveal. I just don't like any of that stupid dialogue. Yeah, the the, the bitches, the time of the right. month. It's all so cheese ball, like mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, well, it's definitely cheese ball. But I guess I, I, I have even more of a problem with her being the uh, the surprise villain the twist, because yeah. there's no like. I mean, once you know what the twist is, yeah. and you go back and you watch the movie, there's not. <sighs> I mean, I didn't think that there was very many tells that she was, you know, trying to protect these people or was a part of it. I mean, yeah. like, it really does come out of the fucking right. blue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm not even sure what her game plan was at that point. Like, yeah. she sends, they've got, like, uh, there's, like, a closet full of, um, like, uh, gas canisters. Oh, yeah. Right? What, yeah. yeah. What is that? Because you got to have uh, fuel out there. You're in the a cabin in the woods. You're 400 miles away, or four hours from the nearest yeah, town. They're gas yeah, they're gas tanks. Sure. Yeah. So you've got your uh, your gas tanks. So they load one up in the truck and send it up 
into the barn where she says, oh, they're probably in the barn. So they, yeah. like, you know, blow the barn up. There's some pretty good explosions in this movie. Yeah, yeah. decent yeah. explosions. Joel yeah. Silver yeah. would yeah. love it. Explosion three. Yeah. Because they blow up the, the Jeep, <laughs> yeah. the barn, and eventually the house. Yep. Um, so the only thing I can think is that she destroyed their ability to leave because she destroyed their vehicle, the only mm-hmm. working vehicle, yeah. right? Yeah. And then she unlocks the door so the werewolves come can come in, and it's like, what in the holy fuck? Like, if you were with them, you could have done this at any time yeah. in, during yeah. the night. Exactly. Before mm-hmm. now. Why did you wait so long to have to turn into a werewolf? I mean, it's very, like, plot convenience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Surprise, exactly. I'm a werewolf. Yeah. Where right. it feels like the accent should have been on Ryan being, you know, he was becoming a werewolf the whole time. He turns into a werewolf. Probably some kind of payoff to the, you know, you can't shoot the dog mm-hmm. thing at the beginning. That's why I'm saying it. That yeah. I don't think that does pay off. And then the fact that when she turns into a werewolf, uh, you know, if she's going to be surprise villain, that like, you know, because then it has to be the arch villain, right? She knows them personally yep. and needs to, you know, have some kind. They just like, pow, she's dead. Yeah, she yeah. does get Do armed really these, quick. You know, with not a silver bullet or anything, which we've established, like, you know, they can't be shot and killed and all this other shit. They just take a regular yeah. gun, shoot her in the head, and she's dead. She's still think, in human ish form. Do you think there was something else in the script and there was a rewrite? It feels like it. It feels like a like a last it, minute it rewrite. It did feel last that, minute, yeah. You know? I don't know. I think he wanted that reveal. He but just didn't I know how to execute it. I don't think he knew how to get to it mm-hmm. or get out of it. And I'm, but he's just like, ah, I really want this reveal. It may have yeah. been something that was like he couldn't be talked out of. Mm-hmm. That maybe kind of he's like, we could still do it. It mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily entirely work, but we can do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what happens when like this is his first full feature length movie. So like, you know, you're not necessarily. Uh, it's not finessed the entire way through on your first movie. I don't right. think so. Certain things end up, you know, sneaking their way in, and uh, maybe early on you don't learn that. Like, all right, yeah, we shouldn't do this and all that stuff. You're just like, no, I really wanted this, and so you keep going forward with it, mm-hmm. and maybe it doesn't entirely work. And right. maybe I think that's what he became victim of. But then, for you know, that. because that would be the thing too. It's like if you do at some point realize, like, you know. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have this in the movie. How would you cut it out? Because suddenly right. she's not in the movie anymore. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. it's like you haven't shot your coverage. No, to, you you, know. sh- you shot what you shot, and now you're just like, well, we're kind of stuck with it. Now it's like, well, all right. And at a certain point, maybe they're all just like, well, we make the best of it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it ends be. up being. I just like I, I want to think those tanks in the house are uh, are it's a uh, helium tanks and this is a family of clowns that lived in the <laughs> sure why not that's, that's yeah. what I, that's what I'm yeah. gonna think I mean and they're yeah. just like they're they're practicing and I like it you know Sean we don't know anything about their human we life. know nothing so that we could know be nothing could this be could they just be clown yeah. family yeah living yeah. in the woods just like we got to practice mm-hmm. and they get hired out for events and whatnot mm-hmm. and, yeah. you know. When you're going through that many clown balloon soldiers. animals, yeah, clown, you're going clown, through that many soldiers. Soldiers. those See, balloon animals, you yeah, need a those, lot of helium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those Scottish Highland clowns, like you find. <laughs> scary, <laughs> scary yeah, people. That live the world four famous. hours away the from the city. The world famous Scottish, Scottish Highland, Highland clowns. clowns. Yeah. There's, there's your next 2017 one. 2017 Saturday Night Freak Show <laughs> copyright right now. Yeah. How much is it? So one of my favorite, like, like kind of tropes of, that this movie does is when Joe goes to hotwire the car, backs it up into the house, and, and he's like, and you just see this like hot breath, breath. coming, yeah. coming, you know, next to his ear, and he just is like, "You're behind me, aren't you?" And like, like it's not even like a Michael Myers fake out of like he's gonna get him. Like the person yeah. is already aware of it because yeah, no, it's such a trope that it has made it into this movie that the universe of this movie is aware of this trope. Yeah, you know, but and it works. It works. So it fucking well. works. It's it's not. It's not cliched. It works because we never get yeah. that like rearview mirror shot of the werewolf. You don't no, get that. No, that's well, the, the thing. The we best, don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. The best is he's just like, well, fuck it, and he just goes to fight it. Yeah. that's the best part. And then you see the car <laughs> rocking and blood splattering on the windows, and that's yes. it. Yeah, it's very Jurassic mm-hmm. Park. Yeah. yeah, there is some Jurassic Park moments in this movie. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was like Spielberg shot too that yeah, wasn't see. pulled off quite right. Where right. like the camera's pulling back and everybody's sitting up, and then uh, Megan sits up in the front, and I'm like. Uh, it's not framed right, but I see what you were going for. <laughs> yes. That was your Spielberg moment. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically who's, who's wraps left? up yeah. the movie. I mean, right? I think I mean, so. the, uh, we, uh, there's some. Who's left oh, at the end? Yeah, who's uh, left I at mean, the we end? Get to the, we get to the point where it comes down to um, uh, 
Sergeant well, Cooper. Cooper. Cooper and Wells. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that they're like, all right, so the, the werewolves are, are, are invading the house at this point. They're just making their way yeah, inside. Yeah, it's a free for all. It's that free point. for, yeah. They're just like everything's out there. But, but that's what I love shit. is that they're just hacking their way through the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Through walls. Through floors, yeah. just whatever they can do to get away from it. And yeah. I love that, because yeah. I haven't seen yeah. that before, where they're just like, we gotta get into the next room, make a way through the wall. It's great. Yeah, and then it comes back down to Cooper not being able to, well, not being able to shoot the dog, per se, because he can't let Sergeant go. Mm-hmm. Well, well, mm-hmm. It's just... I don't know, that part got to me. <laughs> but he doesn't have to shoot the dog. The sergeant's well, like... No, but, he, the gas line. No, but yeah. he doesn't want to He doesn't want to leave him. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't think that's he, the shooting the dog moment, though. Because yeah, then he hasn't, like, advanced. He's still stuck in that same moment, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I'm not going to, you know... That's the same moment where he's not yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. but that's like, not a dramatic arc. No, he it's not. arced, you're right. But I don't think that what we get at the end is necessarily satisfying that yeah. either. Yeah. Like I think there's a better I think there's a better version of that to be shot and executed where you do get the same thing. Like maybe mm-hmm. he does get into the fight with the werewolf at the end, mm-hmm. but it, it comes down to like where he gets injured. And I think you have to put him in kind of the same imagery as what was before. Like the werewolf is injured on the ground and he's got his pistol still mm-hmm. and he holds it to his head, kind of like he did, uh, Ryan oh, did earlier yeah. with the dog. Why didn't we get that? And I think that would have put forward that notion before that he is putting down the dog. Because we did that get. He's finally a gotten to that in the book. head, just not we in that do. manner. Yeah. Right, yeah. we do. But I think you could have done it visually in that manner where you right. get that he's Definitely. doing the same thing. No, that would have made more he's sense. He's finally made it yeah. to the point where it's like he's putting down the dog. Yeah. And I think that would have drove it home a little bit more. That yeah. would have made more sense. That would have sure. been good. I've been yep. like, yeah. Mm, yeah. you solved it. Yeah, yeah, he finally is able to put down the dog. Yeah. yeah. And so he lives. Yeah. Which is where we get to the end of yeah. this. After a major explosion. <laughs> and the two survivors. Are Cooper and the goodest boy, Thank Sam. Thank God the dog. for the goodest boy. Sam, <laughs> Sam the dog survives. Such a good boy. Because even Such when the boy. werewolves are up in his face, he still is just like, st- the dog's just staring I, at I them. I love that I scene. I love that where scene. The dog's like, just kind of looking around, and they're putting this like, you know, the, the werewolf head, head yeah. into like, the inches frame. inches from his face. And, the and dog that dog finally goes like, like and Yeah, and that dog is not happy. He's like, no, no fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> that dog legit looks scared. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, Rrr. Yeah, I like that dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They both made it. He made it though. I like the headline at the end. Oh, oh, another yeah, joke for the yeah. that's, that's half great. off the movie. That's, that's a great just <laughs> werewolves yeah. ate my platoon, and then it zooms back. And this is on like a newspaper, that's and then it zooms wonderful. back, and you see that it's like England beats Germany well, yeah. five the, to I one. That's a huge bigger for headline. Yeah. yeah, it's just like werewolves. I mean, that's nice. It's like yeah. the National Enquirer. It's like, yeah, all right, we got the side story, but yeah. England yeah. beat Germany. That's a big deal. Yeah. And in the closing credits, before we get to the newspaper pan out, we get like a series of photographs that were taken from the camera that's while they were fighting. That's fantastic. I love that. That's really a detail nice. they thought. Yeah. It was just like, wait, what about the pictures that were taken? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like that's I was thinking. Of, this is like your proof that werewolves exist. Yeah. She's right. Yeah. Me, yeah. She's using the flash to distract them, but she's yes. taking these pictures the whole way yeah. through the movie. Yes. Yeah. He didn't yeah. have the camera when he left, did he? No, I think it got that, blown up, and, and I think it's like up. it'd be yeah, cool okay. if that was like the expose in the magazine, where just like here's the pictures to prove it. Mm-hmm. But it's I just wish, like that. I wish there would have been a shot of him grabbing the camera as he walked, or like out of the ashes of the house, picking up just the roll of film or something. Yeah. Yeah. In his pocket, yeah, you know? that would have been good, yeah, yeah, but or good the goodest ending. boy bringing it to him and yeah. dropping He's it. He's just gotten his eyes <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Well, I guess that probably brings us to the end of our... I think okay, so. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're still going to talk about Dog Soldiers. We're going to review this movie. Each one of us is going to have an opinion. We're going to go around the table and find out what the internet radio superstars <laughs> thought of Dog Soldiers, which is always a case of great suspense. Right. We assume we that Michaela really loves it because she brought the movie, but maybe not. That's not we've, always the case. We've had we people assume that Colin loves like it because he's got a certain version of it. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. The movie. We, you know. we do have two copies of it sitting but I'm sure right Colin now. owns shit he does not like. That's true. I do. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I own the Matrix. Because we have... A- <laughs> <laughs> oh, callback. <laughs> yeah, that's comedy. <laughs> All right, but what we're going to do first is we're going to answer some viewer mail. So that means we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. New York! Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Behind the scenes, I'm going to tell you that's Sean clapping every week. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. That's all. And it's only been me for like a yeah. hundred yeah. some episodes. Yeah. I know when you're not I here, the only no one who's clapped, clapped for Igor. Nobody claps for Igor. I don't know. Holly might. No, have I do. Time. I do. Yeah. Yeah. If, you're, okay. if you're not here, I clap. Okay. Because yeah. otherwise Good. he doesn't. Know. Otherwise he's not going to come. Yeah. Because like, he uh, he's not the goodest boy. He's not the, no, he's not he's at all. Not. He's, 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 he's the like, okayest uh, boy. He gets to clap. He's like, oh. He's the does his best boy. Yeah. It's like, oh, we pat him on the head. Thank you, Igor. By the way, I know we're talking about you, but not acknowledging you. Yeah. I appreciate the mail. He and, didn't dress uh, up this week, so yeah. No, he didn't dress not up as even a fucking dog soldier. He's got the dog, he's got yeah. the limbs to pull it off. I'm surprised. Yeah. Thanks, Igor. Well, thank you very much, Igor. So I tell you what, we'd love to hear from you, and you can write into us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can get us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Uh, you can also write to us the old-fashioned way by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can find us on Instagram, where we're Saturday Night Freak Show. Tonight, mm-hmm. Joey Adams writes in about dog like soldiers. Joey Lauren Adams? That's what I was thinking. Like, really? <laughs> oh, she's a fan. Great. <laughs> I don't know. This is from Facebook. Just Joey Adams could be. We're going to pretend. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Joey writes in and says, American Werewolf in London is hands down the best werewolf movie. I don't remember mm-hmm. much about dog soldiers other than the cool looking werewolf special effects, but I can't remember if I like the movie or not, so I'll rewatch mm-hmm. it if you guys suggest it. Well, Ooh, stay someone tuned who's, to find out. Someone who's hanging on our every word. I know, right? Yeah. This I, is now, I feel the pressure. Jesus yeah, Christ. I do agree with American Werewolf in London. There's no pressure. I love that movie. Uh, the Lighthouse Oxford says they love dog soldiers. Who ah. are these people? Uh, Severed Arm Signs by Palinuk. That Chuck Palinuk? This is, this is yeah. a lot of words is, going that's, on. That's a Instagram. lot. Oh, yes. all right. Yeah. Well, lot. all I know is these are new people and welcome to the yes. show. Welcome, <laughs> Severed Arm Signed by Palinuk. <laughs> yes. Do you I'm have a, sever- a severed arm signed by oh, Palna? I hope so. I hope so. Like I need, I need to send know more. To yeah, we need name. a little history. <laughs> this. We need a send, photograph. Send, send we'll keep it, it in the like, basement. We will is put it, a, it up on something. Is yeah. it a fake severed arm? Is it a mummified? I need to know, dude. Yeah, I need Details. to know. Yep. Well, severed arm signed by Palinuk says. I love keep interrupting soldiers. you, so you have to keep saying the name. <laughs> uh, also says I'm dying to see what Neil Marshall does with the new Hellboy film. The Rise of the Blood Queen. Oh, uh, yeah. Starring Mila Jovovich. Yeah, they're casting everybody. And David Harbour from Stranger Things. I would be I if Ron Perlman was still in it. I don't know. I, I like the David Harbour casting. I don't see it. I like I David Harbour. I think it'll but be as good. Hellboy? It l- do you I like think, him as Hellboy? You just I think he's like, the, uh, the Dar- I think Dermal he do. Ones. From what I've seen in like I think certain comics, like just the way he's Hellboy is portrayed, mm-hmm. like the more thinner kind of like slouchier you know, Hellboy. Slouchier, yes, yeah. he's the slouchier yeah. Hellboy, yeah. Yeah. which I think works for David Harbour. Yeah. I think I just I didn't think find him to be particularly remarkable in Stranger Things, <gasps> so I just don't be like I just don't see him as like a leading man material. I think this will do it. I loved him in Stranger Things. Well, like he, I, he wasn't bad or anything. He just didn't have a particularly standout performance to right. me. That's all. Like, I, I don't think, think this he is was standout of well, the show. Well, that's the upside to Hellboy is you're surrounded by you know the BPRD, so mm. it's possible they kind of mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I think this will give him a place to shine. Yeah, and that's the yeah. I mean, this is like the biggest opportunity of his right. Because uh, I'm sure yeah. this is going to put him on you know at least in the genre mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, fans. He'll be doing conventions for the rest of his life. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you really need in this day. Yeah. Just right. Get in some. That's so yeah. Nobody wants is like I need to get a franchise life. so I have a uh, job security. It's like no, I need to do this movie so I can do conventions for the rest uh-huh. of my life. Yeah. That's where it's at now. That, that's that needs to be our goal, dude. Mm-hmm. To do conventions. To do conventions. I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. That's where we need to I want to do a live show at conventions and then just have people come and be like, "I yes. love you." Yeah, that's all I need. That's I just great. want people to tell you me guys, they love me. You guys should request us for conventions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we that would be great. If we do conventions, we'll do like a game show or something. You won't just have to sit around and listen to us talk about. No, nah, here's, we'll here's an fun, idea dude. that Colin yeah. just came up with. That's on right. What is this game show? Because I've heard other podcasts do conventions. And it's like they keep talking about like, well, we just lost another ten people. Like it's not. It, well, this, they're not what? doing it right. No, they're no, not. They're not, they're not this doing magic it. happens no. while you're commuting, which we assume you are, a listener. You're yeah. on a long drive, or you're sitting at your desk, or doing, doing your laundry, or doing your laundry with your headphones in. Sure, right? yeah. But it doesn't really. I don't know if it works in the live environment. I no, think it, it, it can. can. There is. There you just is, have to be funny. You just have to be good at what you do. That's what. It That's is, all. You know? Yeah, yeah. Dude, gotta be good. we're gonna have fun with it. Game show. We're gonna bring 
t-shirts and yeah. prizes. Oh, t-shirts. t-shirt cannons. Oh, I want t-shirts. t-shirt cannons. Oh, we're I'm working gonna, on it. Someone's gonna get shot in the face. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna tell gonna you happen. how to yeah. build an air cannon. It's gonna be fantastic. It's not gonna happen. What? <laughs> I'm just gonna shoot. <laughs> we're just gonna build one on stage and shoot people. This is with not air part cannon. of the freak show. Colin's just like, no. we need something extra. We're not good enough. <laughs> it's like, Colin, we're good enough. People will come to you see us. You gotta believe, man. We'll give t-shirts. Well, we're good enough that Chris Huddleston is written. See how. Judd. <laughs> and he says that the Howling and American Werewolf in London are his favorite werewolf movies. But Dog oh, Soldiers wait. is great, and he'd put it on the second tier alongside, like, Ginger Snap. B team! Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Chuds, I'm a little hurt by that statement, not gonna lie. Uh, B team! Chuds, I would like you to tell us why you think the Howling is as good as. When was the last time you watched the Howling? When was the last time you watched The Howling? I haven't seen The Howling, so I don't know how Oh, my gosh. I own it. Like, you gave it to me at one point. I'm just like, I haven't watched it yet. Wait, did he give it to you or did you borrow it and never give it back? No, he gave it to me, all right? (laughs) (laughs) But it was like, I'm at a garage sale. I'm never going to sell this. Sean, take it so I don't have to bring it back in my house. All right. So, see, Colin didn't even want to own the movie anymore. It tells you very pranks. Again. I'm just saying, odds are he doesn't get rid of something unless he upgrades. Mostly. To me, there's like American Werewolf in London and The Howling, right? And then, of course, The Wolf, man. The Howling. I think we can all agree with Sea Huds on American Werewolf. That's a great werewolf sure. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. the werewolf movie? Well, to me, yes. Well, we can answer that in well, wrap-ups, right? That's right. We probably no. should go to wrap-ups. Uh, oh, wrap-up sponsored by... No. Um, <laughs> oh, that'd be great. All right. <laughs> Pepsi, where are you? Just We're start saying it. They'll have to do it eventually. I'm Coca-Cola Zero Sugar tonight. <laughs> um, Come on, Coca-Cola. <laughs> Pretty you much every week, I'm drinking Stella. Yeah, Stella Artois, please. Uh, I'm please. a I'm a whatever's in the fridge kind of guy. Yeah. So, yeah. so he's drinking my Stella. But if you, <laughs> but if you sponsor me, I'll drink yeah. whatever yeah. you want. New well. Clarice Brewing Company, we're a huge fan. Oh, oh please, yeah. give me some spotted cow. Yeah. All right, we we're get close to, to you. We we're get close to, wrap to the up. state line. Send it, send it over the border to us. Yeah, please, yeah, please. <laughs> ship that illegally. We'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll All shout right. you out no matter what. Let's stop begging. Well, we're not above it. So we're gonna go around the. Sorry. Matt Myra on the Nerdist podcast mentioned how much he loved his Volvo car so much on the show. Volvo started sponsoring. Nice. Shut up! So if you, if you say it, when they will I'm come. It driving enough. my Volvo. <laughs> I when I'm driving my guess, Mercedes right? Benz, yeah. I just want to drive something better than a Grand Am. Please, somebody out there, help me. I love my Honda, but I would love an Audi. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh, things that'll never happen. <laughs> no. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So All right. Wrap ups, wrap we'll ups. go around the table and do wrap ups. So what we thought of Dog Soldiers? You've been looking forward to this segment all for the last like hour. So maybe here maybe comes. Maybe we hate this movie. Maybe. maybe. I mean, it's possible. Maybe, maybe. maybe I hate this We've movie. We've questioned. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I wanted to punch well, you guys. It's all been a ruse. That it's all has happened herring. before. Just like, you know what? Like Fuck Metal you Storm? Guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 that felt like a punishment. I have a soft <laughs> spot. Right? I, keep, I have a soft spot for Metal Storm. Someone out there also likes it. They wrote in. Someone? From the, one one they of said the It was said it was Did we on that? I blocked it out. Charles Band Gem. Ooh, that was the person who said they saw it, you know, uh, when, when they were 12. Didn't, and yeah, they, didn't say that it, they were 12 yeah. and what the hell were they thinking? Gotcha. So oh, yeah. I'm, uh, who are we going to hear from? Colin! What did you think about dog soldiers? This wrap-up is brought to you by Shinerbach. Shinerbach. You haven't done the Shinerbach sponsorship in a long time. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. been like two years, Colin. Aww. We used to do, That used to happen every night. Every drop of Shiner is made <laughs> in Shiner. In uh, Shiner. With love. With, with love, I'm sure. Yeah, it tastes like love. Actually, can I get another It one tastes one? like love. Uh, Dog Soldiers is a movie that uh, we didn't actually say, but like, um, <clears throat> I remember this movie getting a lot of attention on the festival circuit. Not that I was at the festival circuit, but I paid attention to these yeah. things and heard well, of it. You know, we watched these This things. was how I heard of the film uh, initially, in this filmmaker named Neil Marshall. I waited for, and I saw that it was getting a theatrical release in the United Kingdom, and here it was released... On the Sci Fi Channel. It That's what I was wondering. I heard this, it was a sci fi movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if it was like a sci fi movie, like produced better. and. No, yeah. it was, they, edited, just, they acquired it, but they it was, acquired it. Was it. edited okay. to fit, like, you know, whatever. So I, they right. think, because the version I remember, <clears throat> I can't point to specific scenes, but I do believe that certain scenes at the beginning were 
you know, truncated sure. a little bit for running time. That's why I think I mean, those are the this, scenes you can cut out. Yeah. Yeah. The story of the guy with the, should, but... the Satan tattoo. I'm not entirely positive oh, really? that, that was there. Well, because you could cut that out of the movie. Sure. Yeah. And I saw, and it was I, like I, 10 I, minutes. Right. Yeah. I can imagine sci-fi would do that mm-hmm. because what are you going to sci-fi for? But like, ah, oh, werewolves. Mm-hmm. I don't think they really continued God that, right? Him. They weren't doing like acquisitions after, like we're going to bring these festival. Movies no, because the- they found the gold mine of like we can make our own shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people will watch it. Yeah, five of them. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Sharknado. Yeah, you son of a is bitch. That a sci-fi we all know. Movie? Yeah. Oh yeah, sci-fi? yes sci-fi? it is. Yeah, yes, it is. yeah. Well, that was maybe AMC. Or did you not see or- the like whole sci-fi? They did Shark Week, but they did like. Toxic, no, toxic shark. No, I'm not saying you I don't watched watch it. Watch this stuff. Yeah, I'm not, you don't have to. I, no, I didn't no, watch it either, Colin. You don't get to be upset about Metal that because you yeah, watch no, everything. Right. You don't get to have you a, a standard of quality. I didn't anymore. watch it either, Colin, but in I know 3D. about it. Yeah, I know that they did this shit. Attack. That they exposed this to people <laughs> and their children yeah. and innocents. Oh, oh, you're speaking as a disgruntled father. I mean, I don't have cable, so I don't know. When we when we ask Colin why he watches something, he literally says, "Because it's there." Yeah, it's like, why did you climb that mountain? Well, because it was That's there. That's right. It was an, an, an object in front of me. It's like, I just keep and moving Colin forward. has Always time. forward, never stopping, never backwards, always forward, never, <laughs> always stop, <laughs> never, never stopping, always stop going. Swimming. Yes. Yeah. This is never like stop, this, never this, stop. I'm sorry, did you just quote Finding Nemo? <laughs> in your, all right. Do you realize continue, that's what you quoted? Continue with your rap <laughs> So This is the spazziest show we've had in a while. It is, right? We're all over the place. I'm very sorry. Uh, so, it's fun, though. Uh, Dog Soldiers is a... F- it's obviously a first timers movie, and I think the you know I mean uh, uh, the fact that Neil Marshall edited it, edited it himself. Edited it. Um, I think uh, the rhythm of it reminds me of uh, like early of Robert night. Rodriguez. Right, mm-hmm. Rod- Rodriguez was in on the scene in like what ninety one ninety two with the movie called El Mariachi, and he would tell a story in uh, his book uh, A Rebel Without a Crew. About how when he needed to cut between like two people in a room, he had this dog right in the corner <laughs> and he would cut to the, the dog whenever he needed to, you know, like get off of the cover because right. that's all he had. He had a shot of person A, shot of person B and the dog. And the dog. So the dog became like cut to the dog. I love it. Watching this movie, Neil Marshall does that a lot. Because the dog. Uh, yeah, the spinner yeah. Yeah, at the beginning where the guy sits down and Kevin McKidd sits down at the table mm-hmm. and he's telling the story. Cut to the spinner that he's playing with in his hand. They're always, and the, a certain character becomes the dog. Like somebody standing at the door with a, looking out the window with a, you know, waiting for the werewolves to show up and they got the shotgun cut to him whenever, you know. So it's like there's an editing rhythm that you're kind of like, ooh, you're you're just trying to cover the fact that, you didn't, you know, that you didn't have a concise in and out to this. You yeah. shot a lot of footage and then right. tried to put they're it just together like, afterwards. Yeah, they're recovering and they're just like, whoo, all right. What There's do we one. got? They got the other room like, mm-hmm. what do we got? Yeah. And they're just yeah. like, all right, this There's is what we do. Of, well, it's spatially, like, I got lost a couple times. I mean, like Holly was saying, I think you're you're kind of leading there. It's like uh, that, you know, by changing the camera angle and they're crossing the 180 degree line a lot and going, oh, yeah, it doesn't we're going to shoot from uh, yeah. bird's eye view. Now we're going to be cockeyed like down here and we're cutting so fast. It's too disorienting. It's disorienting. Yeah. I don't think on purpose, but a lot of times I was unsure of where I was, you know, my point of view was and mm-hmm. what was going on or who the character was that I was looking at because the uh, quality of the, the, the filmmaking, at the, you know, and again, I'm saying that this is just um, low budget filmmaking. Uh, so and, and a first timers attempt at it uh, is darkly lit and, you know, we can't actually see what's going on or who's, you know in the in the shot uh i think you know um in the end i think that ending thing with uh ryan the ryan werewolf like in the I'm basement not even yeah sure what the hell yeah, happened no, there because they made say, that up like, of like yeah. shots mm-hmm. you know? that is all made in editing you're just like mm. but there's an ambition on display in this movie which i think is you know um It's not so much like a filmmaker overreaching his grasp. He knew that there were certain things that he couldn't afford to do. And so I think he, you know, applied uh, techniques that filmmakers prior to him, a generation earlier, a decade earlier, let's say, a Sam Raimi, you know, I mean, you know, these kind of techniques that 
he's going to try and basically cover up the fact that he can't afford to do like the bigger stuff. But then he is like a, able to blow fucking houses up. And so <laughs> gigantic explosions. I think mm-hmm. they had like a half a house. I think he said he had like the, the front facade or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And they blew that thing up. And this gives it this production value. And I mean, he's got like, you know, like James Cameron, three guys in a fucking werewolf suit. <laughs> but, you know, it seems like, you know, they're constantly under attack by these werewolves. It does borrow. I think heavily from other films, mm-hmm. but not enough to say that it's a direct copy, but you feel the influence of like a decade's worth of eighties movies where mm-hmm. Neil Marshall's like the kid at the video store mm-hmm. renting everything and then put all of his favorite stuff together in a movie. Mm-hmm. This is how you get noticed, you know, as a filmmaker. So I think in that aspect he succeeds i do like the werewolf design in this movie because it looks like a wolf yeah you know yeah um <clears throat> i didn't miss the transformation scene until you mentioned it and i'm like oh yeah shit and need a signature transformation scene but you're right the logic Don't of me. like it wouldn't be any better than something that we've already seen probably um <clears throat> Uh, I think he got decent actors to be in this thing. Mm-hmm. It feels like they were acting, you know, uh, you know, probably these trained uh, either screen stage or whatever actors. You got them all together and these guys are good and they're appealing. And I think, you know, like Sean was saying, the fact of having um, I think you were saying it, maybe Michaela was saying it, the idea of having all of these characters like, you know, getting some time to exist mm-hmm. with them you know, makes it uh, more interesting when their lives are in jeopardy later on. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I uh, I dig this movie. Um, there's just some caveats. You know, it's like this time around, it felt like really long. I've never ha- had it feel this long. How long is before. this movie, technically? I Hour think. and 45, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of felt long. In the, but I, I was crediting or you know, assuming that the reason that was was because it is so dialogue heavy. And I wonder if you could make a play out of it because it is like we're in the woods and then we're in this house. I would watch that play. I would watch mm-hmm. yeah, show that play. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Um, you know, you just have werewolf arms poking yeah. in the windows every yeah. once in a while doing stuff. I don't oh, know. that'd be a good play. It might be cool. And then mm. you'd have like some kind of pyrotechnic thing at the end. I mean, yeah. Yeah, be, oh, that'd yeah. be fun. <clears throat> yeah. You yeah, so, gotta have a dog in this you play. Have the, you yeah, gotta, gotta cast the goodest boy. Yeah. 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 You gotta have the dog. That'd be good. Uh, in the movie called, or in the play called Dog Soldiers, mm-hmm. uh, Dog Tags. Yeah, I'm not sure mm-hmm. what Dog Soldiers this is me being an idiot. I don't know the reference, the, the title, but I'm sure that, you know, military people do, and you'll tell me. So uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I know is DOG an acronym or something? I don't know. No, but I mean it's I a dog so. tag, right? Well, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I think I, I don't know. You come up with, you just find a title at some point. You're just like this fits. It fits everything at this point. Like it Reservoir fit. Dogs. We're still trying to figure out what Reservoir Dogs means. Another dog movie, but it's like Reservoir Dog. Sure. I mean, at a certain point, dogs hang out in the reservoir. I think it's just a certain point. Reservoir dogs are just at the end, they just all end up eating each other. Possibly. Mangy mutts. Mangy mutts at reservoir. that point. And mm-hmm. then, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would recommend Dog Soldiers, especially to uh, Joey Joey Adams. You got to check it out. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It is. I mean, my, how many good werewolf movies are there? Like, really, when you think of it, you know what I mean? You gotta, Not a yeah. lot. You gotta go past it's like five. The, it's yeah. hard to do a good werewolf movie. Yeah. I haven't seen Howl. Maybe Howl's good. I saw Wolves. That was bad. Have you seen Late Phases? I, that was oh, pretty yeah, good. Seen, yeah. Late yeah, Phases like was pretty movie. solid. Yeah. Yeah. So I everyone, so, but Dog Soldiers is better. Like, you should see Dog Soldiers first. Mm-hmm. Then late phases, you graduate to that one. So, uh, yeah, I dig it. I think you should watch it. And now we're going to hear Holly... What do you think of Dog Soldiers? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to be brief. I feel like we've been we've been uh, talking for a long time. Again, we're all over the place. Now. We are all over the place. Um, yeah, I really dug this movie. I thought it was really cool. Um, I I agree. Um, there's a lot of things that point to it being a first timer movie. Um, but I don't think it really. I don't think a lot of it had that like first time director stank on it. Like a lot of it played. Oh, stank. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Beat team. Beat team. Um, a lot of it. Uh, a lot of it, I think, played really well. A lot of and it was a lot of it was shot really beautifully. There was some really great, really great scenes. Um, I, I, the light was a little exaggerated at times, but other times I thought it was really gorgeous. Um, I keep going back to that shot of yeah. her after she cuts her hand. 
It was the really good. Her, the one I'm just like, ah, yeah. I like that shot. There was a lot of scenes where it's pretty. In the in the woods where the lights coming like behind them and I was like wow that's really beautiful, um, so I was I was actually really impressed with that, um, so I, I think stuff like that made up for some of the things that I didn't care for like I said the the reveal with the the dialogue with the girl and the the jumpy editing um, a lot of the editing but that that scene that jumped between characters it was just too disorienting like like Colin was saying. Um, but otherwise I thought it flowed really well I didn't think it felt long I know you said before it's just like maybe a second viewing it felt long um so first viewing I didn't think it felt long I thought it it had a good a good rhythm to it um yeah I I thought the the design of the werewolf was was fantastic it definitely played the partial transition with just the, the contacts and the claws and that was great I don't think they needed to do any more than that um yeah, I really don't have a lot bad to say about it. We've already covered the things that I had I had problems with, and they weren't even that big of a deal. I thought, as an overall movie, it was it was really fantastic. Um, yeah, it, it is hard to do a good werewolf movie, so I would say this is definitely high up on my list now for werewolf movies. Um, I thought it was really good. I definitely recommend it. Um, Dog Soldiers. Uh, what a f- fun movie! Mm-hmm. Like, I had a lot of fun watching this movie. <laughs> Um and you know and and if you uh, know the history Sean of the show I, like, I don't like werewolf yeah, movies that's why I, like, yeah. that's why I picked this like I wanted to movies. challenge you I yeah. was like I know one <laughs> no one can say it's bad <laughs> I don't th- and I don't think you can say this is bad like it yeah. shows like um, uh, uh, many hallmarks of a first time filmmaker mm-hmm. especially especially in the editing where it is like I can totally understand uh, a first time filmmaker who's gone through shot the shit out of a movie and then has gotten to the editing and like all right. What do we got? Yeah. And then just gone through and be like, all right, we got this. We didn't get this. But you know what? There's nothing we can do about that. So this is how we have to put this together. But even in that regard, like the editing, is like it still flows, I think, naturally to me. There are some um, uh, scenes that feel like a little hyper edited, but it all still flows for me. But um, and this movie, like the werewolf design, like it's a werewolf movie. So it comes down to werewolf design for me. And I really like the werewolf design in this movie. Movie. It's uh, very cool. Just long, elongated, tall werewolves with wolf heads and just those those hands, those big mm-hmm. hands that are reaching through everything. That does it for me. I really like the design in this movie. Um, I had a lot of fun with these characters. I think they spend um, it uh, hour forty five. I think we said, and I think it does end up feeling a, a tad long to me. But in that longness, we do get a lot of character setup, which I think pays off. For these characters later on. I like these characters. I like the stories they tell. I, la- I like how they interact with each other. I feel like there's a history between them. So I think that pays off in the end when they you know start falling off one by one. Um, again, there's you know problems of a first-time filmmaker. The reveal of Megan at the end, I think, isn't totally earned. Um, so there's a little problem with that. But there's uh, a lot to like in this movie. And I uh, highly recommend it. Um, I give it... Uh, four spoonies out of five. Very good movie. I like this movie. It's uh, my top, one of my top werewolf movies. I really like it. Awesome. Awesome. A lot of spoonies. I gotta say, I'm a little shocked. I wasn't expecting, you know, three recommends so far, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Just some fun, fun little trivia for you guys before I get into mine real deep. Simon Pegg was offered a role in this movie, and Edgar Wright talked him out of it, saying, save your first horror movie to do Shaun of the Dead with me. Uh, All right, I gotta gotta go with him on that one. worthy Why can't we have both? (laughs) Why can't we have both? I don't know. Because then, but what is he Maybe it was conditional with Edgar. But this this is two years later though like Shaun of the Dead was two years after this he could have done both they weren't at the I don't know but then but Shaun of the Dead becomes uh, is, it becomes lesser so if you're like you Simon already know Pegg's who he is horror is that, yeah. debut like yeah, yeah. Yeah, is, is Shaun of the Dead's not Shaun as like, of the Dead is a horror movie is a little bit of a stretch. I would say it's more of a comedy than it yeah. is a horror movie, but, but that's true. Um Jason Statham also also was originally cast as Cooper, signed on, goes to shoot, and then says, I'm out. I'm gonna go do John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars instead. Uh. Oh. 
Okay. Probably not a great choice. <laughs> not a good choice, but I like yeah. uh, what's his name in this. Kevin McKidd. I like Kevin McKidd. Yeah, Anatomy. from Grey's Anatomy. I like him. I like him <laughs> in this role. He's good. Sean and his Grey's Anatomy. I like him like, giving that, like, that close up of it's all right. It's my wife. Train Grey's Anatomy. Right? Okay. Yeah. Train Who's Tommy he, from Train Spot. Nobody mm. remembers. He's not in the sequel because no. he didn't make it out of the first one. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. <gasps> that means he died. <laughs> Spoilers for Train Spotting, <laughs> which I have not seen. Aww. I know it's all sad. All right, but dog soldiers. So I love werewolf movies. They are my catnip. I cannot get enough. And they are, there's not enough Cats. good. There's not enough. Wolves. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Animals. Cats and dogs. Right. Mass hysteria. <laughs> there's not enough good ones out there. Like, I feel like I'm more disappointed by werewolf movies than I am pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point that it almost feels like an abusive relationship sometimes. I get excited, I watch it, and I'm disappointed. <laughs> These are usually how it goes. This movie is my favorite werewolf movie ever. This werewolf design is my favorite werewolf design ever. Um, I think that it's it's not really a werewolf movie. It's a soldier war buddy heist invasion movie with werewolves in it. Like the werewolf, it's it's built around the soldiers, not built around the, the werewolves. And I think that's why it works. That's so why well. it works. I think yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it works agree. as well as it does. Because yes. if you think about it, you could really switch out the werewolves with any sort of outside force, and the, yeah. the story still works. Yeah. You know, and that's why it's a good. It movie. could be zombies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it make could be any difference. difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be vampires. Mm-hmm. It could be puppies. Puppies. Oh. <laughs> it could be dogs and soldiers. Dogs. It, it could be it actual could be dogs. Dog dogs dressed in like yeah. fatigue. Like, yeah. 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 We're making this. Black, uh, That's like an episode of oh my God. Bone. Black Lab Ops. Black Lab Ops. That's what I was going to say. Yes. <laughs> Black Nailed Lab it. Ops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got we got to make that now. Black Lab Ops. Black Lab Ops. I'm sorry, did you just come up with that? <laughs> yeah, yes. just now. We both had like a psychic connection. Over I'm it. sorry, that was yeah. just something that came out of your brain that doesn't yeah. currently exist. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Black Lab Ops Black has Lab to happen. Ops. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is the next Airbud. Yeah. <laughs> Black Lab Ops. Oh my god. It's <laughs> that title is so great. Airbud. Oh, it's the name Black Lab Ops. I mean, come on. It's better yeah, than dude. Airbud. Oh it's be better than Airbud. That's our tagline. It's better than Airbud. It's better yeah. than Airbud. Oh. oh my god. There, there was a creepy clown in Airbud. Clown connection. Oh, clown god. connection. We just made it. I okay. Oh I can't um, do this anymore. Like, well, no. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> dog soldiers. I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. So dog soldiers. Um, I love the movie. I've been trying to like preach the gospel of this movie because no one I know has ever seen it. Everyone's like, I, everyone thinks they've heard of it, but then when I start describing it to them, they're like, oh no, I've never heard of that. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no one has fucking seen this movie, and it's so frustrating. They're all just like straw dogs. Like, no, 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 different dogs Which, movie. Actually, there is a subtle straw dogs connection because there is a, pot, a, a part in this movie where a guy throws a pot of boiling water on one of the werewolves which in Star Dogs that's like one of his main weapons is pots of boiling water Mm -hmm. Um, in in the exact same way but I love this movie um, it, we we've addressed a lot of its problems and talked about like a lot of the things with being a first time director but I I just no one's no one's heard of this movie and it's so frustrating to me and I love werewolf movies and I feel like this is the best case I can make for like they can be good and they can be scary and they can be gory. I think the design is terrifying. That scene where that where the one werewolf comes through the window and is standing over uh Harry oh, yeah. when he's in the bed. Mm-hmm. That and like but like it's not daylight, it's technically supposed to be moonlight, but like the light mm-hmm. shining behind him while he's standing over him and he's like nine feet tall. That scene is just <sighs> so terrifying. Yeah. And it's gory, and the practical effects look good, and they still hold up over time. And this movie, it's just... I I just love this movie, and I think that even if you don't like werewolf movies, give it a shot, because it is not the werewolf movie you think it is. It's not It's not a werewolf movie you've seen before. It's Sean approved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sean likes yeah. it, so you should too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely. I would, I, I would, my biggest problem with this movie is actually the title. I really wish it had a different title. I wish that they didn't give away that it was a werewolf movie on the cover. I really think it would be a nice reveal if you just went into it being like this is like this is soldiers in the woods and something's attacking them and you find out as you're watching it it's werewolves i think it would be a lot more of a payoff that way Mm -hmm. but obviously that it's we're too far past that at this point i was gonna say it's i mean we're only what 15 years Mm -hmm. off from this movie it's just like "Eh, all right i'm all for a sequel or reboot of this movie i would like to see neil marshall come back with a bigger budget and remake this movie the way he wants to with a big budget or like or do an american sequel where they're you know i don't know i think a sequel would be better Mm -hmm. i think because i don't think remaking this is gonna 
mm-hmm. gonna do any mm-hmm. like there's there's a certain element like he he captured it within this time capsule and I think remaking it would be a bad idea a sequel. Mm-hmm. Probably the best way to go mm-hmm, with this, definitely. especially if like if Scream Factory has uh, uh, released special editions of stuff like this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's not remake it. Yeah, sequel. Yeah. Could you imagine if you could get like a sequel and like I mean, granted, the actors in this movie are fantastic and they're mm-hmm. great, but could you imagine if you could do a sequel of this movie, but cast it in the way you would cast like Red Dawn, like get like five of the biggest like male leads yeah. of your time in it? Like how awesome would that fucking be? You know, but do better than the Red Dawn. And just yeah. maybe Kevin yeah. McKidd back for a cameo because you're not yeah. going to get him cheap nowadays with yeah. his Grey's Anatomy cred. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get him cheap anymore, so it's just a cameo. <laughs> I'm talking about Sean Pertwee's on Gotham now. Yeah, so he's yeah, Alfred yeah. Pennyworth oh, on well. Gotham. Yeah. Oh yeah. well, there it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, well, yeah, but just, Kevin McKibben that just seals him off Colin. from doing Shut anything down. now, yeah. Liam, Shut doesn't it? Because Gotham is Liam such Cunningham prestige is. TV. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would really love yeah, and it, like a like a sequel with like like just five all star actors. I think would be fucking awesome. It probably will never happen. There was a sequel in talks for a while, and then it just it fizzled out because mm. everyone forgets this movie exists. But <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely recommend it. There you go. Especially, how does it rank on the list of like British horror film? Well, uh, maybe, like maybe, severance. but that's why I wonder. It's since it played in uh, England in theaters, right? That's why nobody here has mm-hmm. you know has right, that collective a, memory yeah, of it. Like you said, a because, sci-fi movie. Yeah, nobody saw it in theaters. It came out on sci-fi. The only people who knew it was there were the people who, who were knew, aware who of it. Knew existence. it was going to be there. Yeah. Or stumbled across it on the right. sci-fi channel like uh, Terror Tract, right? Mm-hmm. So basically it's another Terror Tract in the United mm-hmm. States, Monkeys. but it's a bigger deal in the UK. Mm-hmm. So maybe in the UK it actually is a, a thing. We need, we need Liam Cunningham to like do, when he's doing a Game of Thrones press tour, be like, hey, remember that movie I was in, Dog Soldiers? And everyone go look it up because... Yeah. They'll be watching that. Yeah, just give it a mention. Yeah. Just name dude. drop it. Yeah, name yeah. drop it, man. Is he still alive in Game of Thrones? I know that doesn't. Well, we can't yes. tell you that, Sean. Oh, you, you can't because I don't watch, watch anything. Oh, yeah. God. <clears throat> All right. We're going to remedy this. We're going to loan him Game of Thrones Please, season yeah. one. I think we have to yeah. at this point. Sean needs to He's be unsullied. caught up. Sean needs to be culturally <laughs> caught up. What'd you call me? This Un- Game of Thrones joke, you won't get it. You won't understand, son. You won't understand, Sean. I said he was unsullied. I don't like this. You'll get there. All right, so next week Baby we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. <laughs> I intentionally didn't look at you. So yeah, I know, because I was just it. waiting. I was just like, <laughs> we rehearsed this, and you still. Yeah. We did. We, we literally had a dress day. rehearsal at dinner. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Sometimes well, you're getting I'm a, little a lot late of to looks party. behind the scenes on this uh, episode yeah. of yeah, uh, this uh, is, Saturday Night uh, Feature. Yeah, we're yeah. everywhere. Um, so next week we're going to watch a movie. We got another anniversary coming up. I don't want to keep doing this. I just want to <laughs> let you know. Right? Is but someone yes, forcing you Colin? Do. Colin, is you're someone not forcing being, you to do this? You're not being no. forced you to tell this. Us? There's no, no gun to your, forcing me, but like, there's no gun to is, your Sean, alive Sean, wife's is, head. I know, Sean, but is I, there? Is there? That's not, no. Is I didn't, I didn't do anything for this one. <laughs> The uh, you know, but I know there's a couple more coming up. I know, so now you're like, what, what, yeah, what anniversary? Because it's the 30th, so 1987, it's the 30th. so it's September, and this is going to be near dark. Yeah! Yes, yes, so guys, we're going to have fun with this one. All right, good. <laughs> so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, and until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs> 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 fucking delay. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs>